All right. More, uh, any questions on the homework from last night? I suppose we can go over the answers real quick. Uh, Sorry about that before I start the podcast, but that's okay. Listening to a few answers isn't going to hurt any of the listeners on the podcast. Even if you don't have the book, it's okay. So we did 3 through 22, was it? Yeah. Uh, 3X is 9 and Y was 15. 4, M is 5 and N is 12. 5A is 55. 6P is 60. 7B is 126 and Z is 28. 8G is 61. H is 9. 9 is 129, 10 is 85, 11 is 61. Uh, 12, angle F so it would be 78, P would be 102, Q would be 78, and R would be 102. Uh, 13, A is 3 and B is 10. 14, M is 4 and N is 3. 15, X is 4 and Y is 4. 16 was A as an atom. Uh, 17 is segment BC, 18 is angle BCD, 19 is angle DAC, 20 is 47, 21 is 47 degrees, and 22 is 86. That's alternate interior angles, actually. Questions on any of those? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, 16 is a great one look at because I wanted to add some coordinate plane in today anyway so this is a good excuse to do that all right let's make that a little bigger all right so we had our point our vertices here in number 16 we're at the origin one two three four zero so origin four zero um, Negative two, negative five. Okay. And right there at two, five. Positive two, five. So those are the vertices of the parallelogram. And that's what's given in the picture. It says, find the place where the diagonals intersect. Find the midpoint of both diagonals. Now, we know that diagonals are going to bisect each other. So, if I look at this, the midpoint of this diagonal between 0, 0, and 2, 5, we go 0 plus 2 over 2, 0 plus 5 over 2, right? That's a midpoint formula. Add the x's divided by 2, add the y's divided by 2. So that gives me 2 over 2, which is 1, and 5 over 2, which is just 5 halves, or 2 and a half. So that midpoint is at 1, 2 and a half. We confirm with the other one, because this is 2, 5, and this is 4, 0. For the other diagonal, and I guess I'll redo that in red, just so we have that. Um, we take the x coordinates, it's negative 2 plus 4 over 2, negative 5 plus 0. I'm sorry, it's positive 5. My bad. 5 plus 0 over 2. So that's our midpoint formula again. x plus x divided by 2, y plus y divided by 2. And that gives me 2 over 2, so that's 1, and this is 5 halves. Aha, uh -huh. both diagonals have exactly the same midpoint, don't they? Which is what they should have if they're bisecting each other. So it's just an example of using the midpoint formula with our parallelograms. And we'll have to do that more and more. But really, that process of midpoint formula is such an easy process. It's way easier than distance formula. Slope is not bad, but this one you don't even have to subtract. It's adding. Adding is always easier. So... Just keep that in mind. One thing we can do with parallelograms is find that both diagonals have the same midpoint. That's kind of one way we can work with that. And if that's true, we'll learn tomorrow, if the, both diagonals have the same midpoint, that's one way of proving that it is a, a parallelogram. Yeah. 17. Um, oh, you needed that 
kind of funky fun picture for number 17. Funky fun, that's what I said. All right, we had, taking it out of its context a little bit and distorting it horribly, um, we had A, B, C, and D. We had this angle is 47. Uh, we had the diagonal AC drawn in. We had that this angle was 86 degrees. Um, okay. And I think that's everything we were given. And we're given that these sides are parallel. So it's a parallelogram. And let's just start asking questions. So segment AD would have to be congruent to which segment? Well, the opposite one, because opposite segments are congruent, so it must be BC. And angle DAB is congruent to, okay, DAB, opposite angles have to be congruent. I just ignore the diagonal, BCD. So then we got into some more interesting questions like um, 20, the measure of angle ABC. Now, again, just a little notation difference here that is a little bit subtle, but something we need to keep track of. Notice here it's angle congruent to angle. Now it's asking for the measure of the angle. So here I actually want a number. I want an actual value. I don't want to just say it's the same as the measure of a different angle. I want the actual number that is measuring along. That's what that M, -A -M in front means. So ABC has to be congruent to ADC, so it must be 47 degrees. And they also ask for justifications as to why. And for this, like, it just it's the opposite side because opposite sides of parallelogram are congruent. Opposite sides congruent. This would be opposite angles congruent. Again, opposite angles congruent. So we got our reasons too. Okay? Other questions? Uh, sometimes in some of the problems we're going to see today, we get just a description, not a picture. So we have to draw our own picture. The measure of one angle of a parallelogram is 20 more than three times the measure of another angle. What are the measures of the angles? So when we get just a verbal description, we're going to have to draw ourselves our own little picture. Okay. The measure of one angle is 20 more than three times the measure of another. So this one down here, which is the bigger one, has to be 20 more than three times the angle measure of the other angle. We have to make up our little algebra expression too, don't we? I could do 10, 20 plus 3x to 3x plus 20 makes no difference. Clearly, they are not going to be congruent. If one is 20 more than three times the other, they aren't going to be the opposite angles, are they? because the opposite angles must be congruent. They must be consecutive angles. And what's the relationship between consecutive angles in the parallelogram? Supplementary. So to solve for x, I'm going to have to do what? 3x plus 20 plus x equals 180. Yeah. And that's, again, now some of you are still having a little bit of algebra difficulty, so do not be afraid of showing your work. Okay, so my angles are 40 and 120 plus 20, so 140, 40 and 140, which is 20 more than three times 40. How about that? It works. So you're going to see some problems today that work like that. So you actually have to draw the picture, work with the parallelogram, know the facts about the parallelogram. Um, let's just review. And again, this is... 
really just kind of pounding this information in. That's what we're about, knowing these facts about parallelograms. And knowing them well. Opposite sides have to be, give me one property. Opposite sides are congruent. Well, opposite sides are also parallel. Opposite angles are congruent. Consecutive angles are supplementary. And diagonals do what to each other? Bisect each other. Okay? So, again, not tough concepts. Honestly, a lot easier than the last chapter in a lot of ways. Because you don't have all the Soka Toa and, and not so much setting up weird equations here. No square roots to speak of. Just facts about parallelograms right now, and it's really back to just setting things equal or adding up to 180. Which you kind of got used to doing. These are some interesting problems. We get things like this. It almost looks like it's a V shape. It almost looks 3D, but it isn't. Well, I guess if it's folded up at the time and has no legs, yes, it would be a lawn chair that's folded up and has no legs. Okay. Always creative what you come up with. But really, it's not supposed to be 3D. It's supposed to be just a one-dimensional or two-dimensional drawing. So it's saying find the values of X and Y and explain how you know it. So we've got to look like kind of one parallelogram at a time. Let's look at this parallelogram. If this is 30, how long is this side down here? which means this side has to be 30. So x equals 30, your explanation might be, say, opposite sides are, para are parallel, are congruent. They are parallel, but they're also congruent. Angle might be a little more interesting. This is going to require a little bit of work. This angle is 70, so what's this angle up here going to be? 110, and this angle, and the whole angle down here is going to be 110, but why is just this little piece right here? So, what other information is going to help me find why? Yeah. Oh, Okay. Because it's isosceles, these two are both 70s. Yeah. So it's going to be 140, so y has to be 40. Okay. So y equals 40 because opposite angles are congruent. And then isosceles triangle. All right, so a couple different reasons why there. We needed to work a little harder. And lo and behold, there we are right back into working with triangles again, aren't we? It's never going to go away. The rest of your life is going to follow you. Like that crazy cat that follows you home one day and won't go away. Triangles shall follow you everywhere you go. Good to know. All right. Uh, actually, these are just a couple quick ones. Just a couple quick ones. How are we going to set that up? This should be pretty easy. What's X going to be? You should be able to tell this by looking at it. 61. Wow, that was tough. How about here? A little tougher. How are we going to set it up? 2N equals... 9 minus n, a little tougher, maybe not so much of a thought one when we have to do, ah, now I see it, n is 3. Okay, so again, just setting up and solving, working with parallelograms, that's all we got going today. Very simple. And probably enough time to get a significant portion of your homework done here in class today. So Friday, 23 through 31, 38 through 40, and 46 through 48. 
Um, and now, you know what? I'm not going to worry about the vocab for today. Yay. So just the, just the book stuff, just the problems. And, again, you sh you've got 10 minutes here, almost 15 minutes. You should probably almost be able to get this done in class. And then I have any homework for the weekend, so you can go to the winter dance and have fun. And yeah, no body paint, though. No body paint. That's the rule. I can't think of really any time that body paint would be appropriate at a dance. 